Hi again to the mind, the XR Gap podcasts. This one is part two of the XR insecurity. So if you didn't listen to the previous episode, I encourage you to do it and listen to it. And now without further ado, here's the second part of the episode. I have another idea, sorry Tiago. Yeah, go, go, go for it. What does a VR headset? We're focusing too much on VR headset, but most XR wearables and handheld devices, what do they come with? They always come with a camera, right? Yeah. With sensors, which can scan the environment, create meshes. Even VR. Or, yeah, even, yeah, yeah, VR yeah, yeah, VR does as well, yeah, of course. But like a mixed reality headset or a mobile phone would as well. And what you can end up doing is if someone can have a gateway, it's some sort of access to your device, they can see how your living room looks like. Yes. <laughs> or they what can items get do you have? pictures of it, what items you have where your keys at, and if you have kids and stuff, like can see those and lots of problems, to be fair. And I guess this could apply to anything with a camera. Yes. But I guess with a VR headset, you can have a long-term use of it and it has a large field of view and you move a lot. So they can actually end up creating yeah, and your the whole room. And the person do that without being aware that can be sharing those images with someone if they were able to temper with the device, yeah. So how do you how do you see security different in XR from like normal security in computers? Like because you have device tampering, you have uh, ransomware, you have I don't know uh, malware, you have denial of service, but that that is in the normal PC world and servers and networks. How do you translate that into XR. Uh-huh. I guess I have an answer for that. I yeah, if you want to cur- start, yeah. I, I guess in the current state of wearables and other mobile devices, it's not so different when it comes to cyber security, but physical, of course, we are at certain stuff, other stuff can occur and you can bump into stuff or fall off a balcony, like I mentioned previously. But I guess in the future, when the VR headsets do not only focus on vision and sound, and we get like smell or feeling of cold and hot or more haptic feedbacks with vibrational different sort of ways of how it lets you feel what's happening in the VR world and someone that accesses to it and for example changes the temperature that you're feeling to a very high temperature and you might have like a heart problem or blood pressure problem that you might react to it so they can actually turn to killing weapons if that makes sense like in the future if we if they get more advanced and people access to it a lot can happen one that i again just remind me myself um and i think this can happen right now it's more feasible <laughs> to happen it's it's more physical uh it's a, phys- a physical attack and because Looking at, of course, in VR uh, devices, uh, you stop being aware of your surroundings. That means that anyone can enter and see what you're doing, because normally these applications have a kind of a preview on the screens. So imagine that you are authenticating in an application in VR, uh, using your account's credentials, again, using the, like Max said, um, the username and password and you're writing down in a virtual keyboard. People outside VR can look into it and see what you're doing and you can't and you don't have a good way to hide it, at least for now. Um, And I think this should be think about how we are sharing that information. (laughs) So so going down that route, um, you obviously uh, we've we've briefly touched on the fact that um, passwords have their have their flaws. Um, are you aware of any um, other authentication techniques that exist or have been recently published uh, for VR environments that helps you know, solve the issue of passwords being inconvenient, potentially observable from a screen um, that, that's showing what the user is doing within the VR environment? Is there Anything that's been recently published or released that you know you, you've you've identified as being a sort of mitigation of that and a solution to 
to to the detriments of passwords. Mm, I think you are better a person to answer that than I, <laughs> because one of those one of that I'm aware is, for example, uh, iris um, categorization. So uh, actually, uh, some VR devices already track your eyes, and actually they track the way your iris open and closes. And again, that's unique. And it's very difficult to forge, uh, I believe. I hope Max will say otherwise if I'm wrong with this. But I think so. So, so do you mean the so also related to the pupils, so the size of your yes. pupils? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I've only recently read a paper on that. Actually, I didn't know it was possible till recently. So maybe you know more of that than me. But but yeah, there's a lot of unique features that you know we can extract from people's eyes. And yeah, and that makes that's able for us to authenticate on something without actually writing a password or a username. There's a, there's a very good website um, hosted by a Cambridge professor who um, pioneered the you know, field of iris recognition, and he's got a lot of good resources on eye recognition and eye biometrics mm -hmm. on his website. Mm -hmm. um, he, f he first patented um, his his idea, and I think. 1994 and the techniques that he used to recognize irises are still used today they're that you know, robust and i don't want to be wrong here but i think google as well has some patents on this on this field trying to use the eyes to authenticate people i wouldn't be surprised it's a very very big area a lot of people um very interested in irises they're very unique yeah because eyes are kind of a, a fingerprints right they are unique for that person. So if we can extract those unique features, then you have a new system of authentication. Yeah. 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 A lot of systems are, are based on that. I mean, humans have always found eyes very interesting. There's a field, I think it's called Id idriology or something. That's something I probably pronounced it wrong or got the word wrong. But yeah. Yeah. And, and um, you know, trying to determine health based on, um, the way that someone's iris looks. Mm. Um, obviously, that's junk science, I, I, I believe. But yeah, irises have been an object of interest for a very long time. But um, yeah, I, I can link you to that um, professor's website if you want to put it in the um, description of this podcast, because there's a lot of good information on his website. All right, nice. Thank you. Um, what about um, voice recognition? Could it be used as well for as an authentic authentication method? Voice recognition is, I think it's a bit trickier. Uh, you can do voice categorization. You can actually use your voice to do commands. I know there are, um, I, I don't think voice by itself can authenticate, authenticate a person, but we can use that in uh, combination with others to make it unique. So for example, voice and eyes movements or voice and gesture movements, maybe, uh, with a combination of those, we are actually be able to create a password or an authentication method. <laughs> uh, voice or speaker recognition has been um, used for authentication, but yeah, as as you say, Tiago, it's generally um, the, the effectiveness is generally on how how of course how well it's applied. Whether you've got um, techniques to detect whether it's actually the person saying the words. Um, whether they have to say a certain phrase or whether it's, you know, they can say whatever they want. So there's a lot of um, things in there that might you know, might be of consideration if, if one were to use voice recognition. Right, so now for the new segment for this episode not to be long, uh, Anasol has something for us. <laughs> right, yes, I just found a, a patent um, news in which Apple is looking into micro gestures for XR. So uh, as far as I understood, it's like having a controller, mm -hmm. but without the controller. So it detects your gestures. Um, it's not very clear if it's going to be for XR um, because, you know, well, there's rumors always about Apple creating their own um, AR, VR glasses. Mm -hmm. so yeah, we don't know. True. But uh, another could be for the um, Apple Watch. Oh, true. Another usage, yeah. Now, oh, so th those, this is basically giving just simple movements that uh, are then uh, actionable, basically, right? Like turning your fingers can mean turning uh, gear in the VR world, right? 
yeah I there, there is it. yeah there is this video in which uh, the person is moving the thumb and mm. if you have your wrist watch um well it, you are moving a certain muscle right so it detects which, it detects which one you are yeah. moving and then yeah respond accordingly in the ui Interesting. This is very similar to something that I, I saw. Again, I don't remember <laughs> the name. Today I'm I'm having a lot of blanks. They also use a camera to kind of track the gestures and do fairly sa the same thing like this. Uh, very simple UI stuff that you can actually uh, interact uh, with basic gestures. Uh, and I think this is very tight to what we are being talking about. It's a way for us and in this case uh, from my understanding they are using the muscles of your wrist right so it's basically trying to categorize those movements those little muscle movements uh, and tie them to actions so if you're moving your thumb finger down a very specific set of muscles you will move and if you can pinpoint them you can actually understand that kind of movement and then you can translate that into an action like scrolling like you're doing on your phone but without your phone uh, and this is very interesting i think this could be um the way that vr can be more powerful than a normal computer imagine that we can now then with that start tracking your fingers um and uh, with that, you can actually start typing virtual keyboards without the the actual keyboard in a natural way. Of course, it's not the, the current jittery and weird way, but in a natural way. Uh, and I think that can suppress computers very quickly if we are able to do that. Don't you agree? Yeah, at least the concept of computers that we have in which yeah, you have a keyboard and a mouse. Um, I've just found as a follow-up to that news mm -hmm. that actually Facebook is the one who created the wrist device. And oh, okay. Yeah, there are some animations there. So actually is replicating the movement of the hand uh, through yeah, identifying which muscles are they moving. And you can see a, an um, animation in VR. Oh, wow, I'm watching. Oh, I think... Max will be very intrigued by this. <laughs> There's a lot of us learn the data here. Um. So yeah, this I guess this is more accurate perhaps to mm -hmm. the the ones that because yeah, in the Oculus, for example, we do have the gesture recognition. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's still it's still experimental, uh, but maybe if you combine both inputs, so the one from the camera and this type of devices, it might um, enhance the experience. Because yeah, Oscar and I, we did a couple of experiments with the hand gesture recognition API in the Oculus. Yep. And it's, it's very good, but still um, it's tricky sometimes for some of the users. Yep. So maybe this could uh, enhance the experience. And it make it even make it more accurate because with this, now it's not only a camera tracking your hands, but it's also you have a a kind of um, a band in your wrist and also giving you tracking informations. So you're actually tracking more precisely where the N is. Uh, and with this, if you start categorizing the muscles as well, uh, I think you can create a more smooth and more natural gestures in VR. Um, I agree. Yeah. This could yeah. be this yeah. could be a step for a very nice uh, natural gestures interactions mm -hmm. with vr and you start grabbing stuff and you think or it gives you again that feeling that you're actually grabbing and doing actions uh on that environment yeah also this could be green for the environment because you're elimin you're putting everything into one device plus your hands and just just there's no mouse keyboard pro and those are the devices that tend to break a lot and that you need to change so this could be i don't know i mean it's just a hypothesis uh, like a guess prediction again it could be better for the environment because you're just if, playing with the holographic stuff other than actual physical yeah that that will be for the the 
the, the um, one that uses your camera, but this one uses haptics, so it, it does need a device in your wrist. Yeah, but yeah. it's not, not breakable. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, it's hoping, mean, right? hoping it's stronger than a keyboard on a mouse. Yeah. Well, I'm not aware that people break keyboards and mouse very often. <laughs> it happens, I, yes. I, I tend to change but, my quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, but I know, I know. For example, if you buy a new computer, you normally buy a new keyboard and mouse as well. So, in that regards, I think we can use one. If you get that brace, bracelet, you're not getting more than one, right? You can use the same on different devices. I guess it depends how much water and power you use to construct one as well. This could be a bit more, more expensive than a simple mouse on a keyboard signal. Of course. So but it depends. Also, also depends what, what is the purpose for this. I I, I don't think um, a, a wrist device would be good for typing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know, maybe in the future it, it might. But at this stage, I don't think so. Even so, though they, they have a video here showing a, a person type, typing on the table with those wrists. But again, I'm not sure how accurate they are. <laughs> but yeah, I, I guess it will enable different type of gestures, which is which is more interesting for me. Um, instead of like the normal keyboard mouse interaction, being able to do more realistic movements um, and therefore behaviors, and then these translated somehow into the computer. And again, there's a lot of biometrics here involved. Um, isn't that so, Max? I think as if we start using biometrics yeah. and ways to categorize body movements, we can achieve a more natural way to interact and um, start working uh, in a better way in this kind of environment. So any other thoughts to end this episode? Make sure you have a co good password, people. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> have good passwords. Don't make people look into your passwords. Strong and stable passwords. Yeah. And if you can't <laughs> uh, avoid sharing your information, be aware what you're sharing. Be aware of what kind of data are you sharing, even if it's a trust company. Make sure that you are okay with that. <laughs> I have to say, as a biometrics researcher, the 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 advice to use strong passwords, I have to I have to respond and say maybe we shouldn't be using passwords at all. <laughs> True. Maybe we should be focusing on the biometrics. True. Even even the most even the people you'd expect to be the most aware of um, computer security and passwords um, often often also fall into the trap of using very weak passwords. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, er Eric Schmidt from from um, used to work used to be Google's CEO, I, I believe. His password for a while was uh, Wendy with three exclamation marks, oh, wow. Wendy being his <laughs> wife. So, you know, if 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 pioneers can fall into this trap, you know, uh, what, what hope do the rest of us have? <laughs> That's true. That's true. Li maybe living off the grid. It's, it's up to, exactly. Yeah. It's one way to go, <laughs> but at least we need to be aware of that. We need to put those new kind of technologies uh, to the consumer faster. <laughs> we need to find more things, research more, and deliver more of these kind of solutions, I believe. Yeah. Yes. All nice right. way of ending it. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much again for Max uh, to be our special guest today. Uh, I, I hope you enjoyed <laughs> this little healthy chat about security. Uh, and again, Sol and Oscar as, as well, our <laughs> main hosts. Regulars. Well. Yeah, the regulars here. Uh, thank you so much. And I hope to see you on uh, our next episode. Follow us on Twitter. And if you have any questions at all to us, I'm still waiting for a question from the audience. So use the hashtag AskTheXRGap. I think that's it. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so if you have any questions for us or any topics that you liked for us to, to talk about and we'll be keen to answer them. All right. Uh, thank you so much and bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Adios.